Hey, everybody. It's the Drive School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host, and Paige is back. How are you doing, Paige? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing okay. I I, I got some coffee. I, I have some energy. We're, we're going to talk about uh, something pretty important uh, because most of the world gets it wrong. Uh, what are we talking about today? We are talking about how God and the devil are not polar opposites of each other. They're not equal and opposite parts. Right. There's uh, a lot of sort of idea that that there's like this yin and yang that um I, I know you you're so desperate to go light side and dark side of the force and I know these, I these am things it's made before. exist in equal but opposite parts and so when you enter in uh christianity it, it's tempting to sort of apply the same sort of multicultural approach to uh to god and the devil with with good and evil but um why is that wrong well the devil is a created being okay and god is god so God created everything. God created the devil. Your creator always has more power than the created. That makes sense. Did God create the devil bad then? No. Because he's good. So why do we have evil at all if, if God created the devil? And that's the, the question that I think kind of makes this yin and yang thing make mm -hmm. sense to people. Is they're right. like, oh, well, he had to have been created bad. But that's not at all what happened. Right. This is not a, a talk about balance. In fact, uh, the devil was was created as an angel of light. Uh, he he fell out of hubris and jealousy and was cast down because he wanted to see God's pinnacle of creation, humanity, suffer. He wanted to see us cut off from God. He wanted to see us made less. Um, but when all of this happened, uh, we don't sort of have two equal but opposite forces warring over your soul. We, we still have, well, he's, he's God's devil too. Um, like God is still in charge of this. So what does that mean when we start to see Jesus and Satan interact? What does this mean when, when we talk about mm -hmm. Satan who, who tempts us? Uh, what does it mean for our lives as Christians? I mean, we just have to remember that Jesus rose from the dead he defeated the devil he defeated death he defeated the thing that fell like we as christians have that hope in christ who has the devil under his foot he crushed his head right and so if we're going to actually start with the cross and the resurrection it makes it actually easier to figure out the rest of it because if if uh christ really did conquer the devil at the cross and he did this by by taking away any sins that that Satan would accuse us for, that's what Satan means. It means accuser. Um, the devil has nothing left to accuse you with. Uh, if if it is his goal then to see humanity cut off from God, God won simply in that that Christ has reunited us to God uh, through through the cross that ended our rebellion, that that forgives our sins and that wins for us eternal life. So when you sort of look back then as to how uh, Satan and Jesus interacted, I mean, the most notable places where Jesus was tempted in the wilderness uh, for 40 days, um, and everybody sort of wants to picture it sort of like this, well, like an American movie where, you know, Jesus is somehow at, at best, uh, you know, on equal footing and at worst, the underdog, um, where, you know, this is sort of like Rocky or, or um, Luke Skywalker or anybody else who sort of isn't expected expected to, to do great against a bigger force, but, but somehow does. Uh, but when, when Jesus is tempted by the, by the devil in the wilderness, it wasn't even possible for him to fail because it, it's outside of God's capacity to sin. It's outside of God's capacity to, to not save. And so when, when the devil is, is tempting Jesus in the wilderness, it's, it's sort of like the wind gently blowing against a tree. It, it's, it's not going to do anything. Yeah, and I always um, get reminded of the words from A Mighty Fortress, the one little word can fell him. It's like, be gone, Satan. And he was. Mm -hmm. So when we when we have this this victory, uh, how does it play out? Because the, the Bible also talks about Satan as a murderer from the beginning, a great adversary, a lion that prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking those whom he may devour and a, a call to resist him comes into play. Where, where do we sort of find the devil at work in our life if God is stronger than the devil? If, if it's sort of uh, instead of two equals fighting for our souls, it, it's, it's an ant and a horse fighting. Mm -hmm. I mean, the devil can seem like he's awfully strong because we see all this like murder and evil and lying and deceit and all of this stuff and we're like oh geez like this is pretty prominent this is a problem well then we also see jesus and we pray and we know 
that no matter how bad this looks, because the devil can make things look awfully bad, like Jesus has already conquered it. Jesus already won. Then, then what we have is, is a, a lion with no teeth uh, for, for you in the church. Um, we, we recognize that that there is still spiritual attack. There, there is a, still such a thing as dark and demonic forces. There are things out there that you, you don't want to poke at because compared to us, yes, they are still stronger because God is stronger than a fallen angel, but we are we are not as strong as a fallen angel um, in, in that, that pecking order. But this is not a fight that you fight on your own, but it rather it's one you take shelter in and Christ who's already won for you the victory. And so the devil will attack, the devil will claw, but his purpose in this um, is not just to cause you harm, but it's to draw you from Christ. And in some of the places where he does it, then you actually see the devil working disguised as an angel of light, actually tempting us to, to seek the easier road, to, to seek pleasure, to seek the things that, that sort of feel good at the time. Uh, but in all of it, it works doubt because this is really at the sum of every temptation. You see it in, in the garden with, with Adam and Eve, you see it in the wilderness with with jesus uh satan's only real tool left right now because he can't accuse you of sins that jesus forgives is to try and make you doubt and so he he confronts adam and eve saying if 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 and he confronts jesus saying if um surely you, you will not die like god's probably not right let's what if what if he's wrong and in that doubt it we always want to pick up the burden ourselves because this is why the devil will, will, will sort of tempt us. If, if there is doubt in God, well, then we immediately start to try to carry the water. And so if there was doubt that God was going to take care of Adam and Eve, then Eve better better handle this herself. And Adam better just make sure that God was uh, actually lying by testing a, a product out on his wife instead of taking care of her. If if um, Jesus really, you know, is, is tempted by Satan, he tries it against somebody who's not going to listen. But, you know, if, if God's not going to take care of you, you, you better build for yourself a kingdom down here. And he does the same thing for us. If, if God is not going to answer your prayers, why believe in him at, at all? If God is not going to give you the things that you want, like a vending machine, why would, why would you think that he loves you, even though your parents sometimes tell you no for very good reason too. Um, it, it's always a question of, of doubt. And so when, when, when the devil attacks, for us, the question isn't so much what to do, but but where to turn. We we fall back on God's very clear promises and the fact that he rose from the dead just as he promised, right? Exactly. It's kind of going into what conferences are going to be this summer, the beyond reasonable doubt. Um, we have faithful men and women in the church that we can also talk to. It's like, if we're having this doubt, get, did God really say this? If this happens, like, is this good? Is this bad? Did God really say? We have teachers, we have pastors, we have friends, we have the Bible, turn to the word, turn to Jesus, and Jesus will tell you what he says, plain and clear. Right. All right. So we are recording this. You're not going to hear it on May 4th, but we're recording it on, on May 4th. Do you want to give me some Star Wars? I, I know you're so, I know you're so excited too. I have a lightsaber, you guys. <laughs> we out. Yep.